Oof. Man, it's a snowy mess out here today. It's just brutal. Welcome back, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode. So we're heading out on the ice again with uh, with Chris. I know lots of you probably know uh, know Chris or from the Wood of Beardsman's channel. So we're heading out again um, for another night of, of ice camping here. Chris is bringing his, his hot tent. If a lot of you might have seen Chris's previous video with me, we were... Uh, we schlogged it in a night in a uh, in a Quincy in a big ice igloo. Uh, I think it was like minus twenty five degrees or something. That was uh, that was rough. <laughs> really focus on the ice fishing this time. Heading to a spot where burbot should be plentiful. There's known it's a known lake trout spot and it's also a known whitefish spot. So we're looking for the hat trick over the next thirty six hours. So it should it should be a good one, guys. So uh, stick around and we'll see you out on the ice. And no, that crazy guy won't be joining us, but I'm planning to take him out in a, on a video, for, and plan on taking him out in an ice fishing video soon. Made it. Almost. This is worse or better than you were expecting. I think we're good. I think we're good here. It's gonna get slushy, I think. But... So the problem with the hot tent is once the fire's cooking, it's even if there wasn't slush on top of the ice, it's gonna get slushy. But when you're starting with slush, I don't know, it's gonna be soupy, I think. We'll find out. <laughs> Made it to the site though. Um pretty much been scouting out here for the last 15 minutes looking for the least slushiest spot and I think we're landed on this spot here. We're, we're fairly content. It's uh, it's still it's still soupy, but it's not as bad as uh, as other spots. So we're gonna set the tent up now, and uh, we'll get fishing after that. Beauty. Oh, baby, that was beauty. Beauty. Oh. Okay, so hold on a sec. Yeah. I gotta get this into the corner. You think I've done this before? So each corner you're out? Yep. Just lift up. Push. It should go in the sleeve. Builds up. Yep. And then we can pull that 
You don't pull that black thing before you pack it. Okay. Because it'll make the tent a lot bigger. Look at this thing. It's already warming up in there. This is home for the night. Uh, I got two cots in here. It actually, you know, honestly, it fits a lot more comfortably than I was expecting. Now, the biggest fear is obviously the floor is slush already. It's not too bad. It, it's fairly packed down. But I'm sure once that fire gets cooking, Chris says it gets up to like 30 degrees in here. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, a, it, it'll be slushy by the time we're done. 100%. So um, that should be exciting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just bail it out. As Chris told me already, he called that side and I, I was a little skeptical right away. I'm not sure. I put that cut up. I thought that was me for sure. He says this side is... Uh, is the stove side he doesn't tell he hasn't told me why it's the bad side it's not bad <laughs> you just your feet are gonna be hanging so you're gonna have to make sure your your sleeping bag doesn't burn get over the edge too far I mean, there it is you're gonna have plenty of room okay i'm just saying it's not it's not as much room as on this side although the, the bad side about this side is that it's like you have to feed the fire Although you, you can actually, this is sides you have to feed the fire too. So he said, though, no, if, if I was older, he would have given me that side. <laughs> Usually, I, I let my guest have this side, but I mean, you've got all the time in the world to figure out which side's the best. And today, you lost that one. That's the way she goes. <laughs> Just getting the first minnow down here, and he's aiming to between 30 and I guess 50 feet of water. We're sitting right now at. Oh, 42, 43 feet, so. You talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> Little minnows, eh? Yeah. I don't know. I guess you should trust the locals. Chris took a medium one. We're going, we're going real small. No, we're not trying to catch small fish. This is just what works around here. But as usual, I'm trying to keep it about between five and 10 feet off the bottom. Hopefully something comes in quick and slips her up. Give us some lunch. We've got our camp set up. We got our minnows down to the bottom. We've got three minnows out right now. Chris has both of his lines right now dedicated to live bait. I have one. I'm just tying on my, it'll be my active uh, jigging second line, I guess you want to call it. This is a uh, start with the old reliable white tube. For laker fishing, it's uh, if you're not using a white tube, uh, I don't know what you're doing. This is one of the most basic baits. They work everywhere. This is probably the best known lake trout artificial bait so it's a good place to start got some other uh, tricks up my sleeve in case uh she doesn't work but we're gonna we're gonna get jigging here and uh i'll bring you guys along with us hopefully we can get some lakers well i wish we had more to update on but <laughs> it's been slow um again it's it's been a pretty slow year uh for fishing in general Chris is back there checking his lines. I don't think he's even checked it yet, but with his setup, if there's a uh, if there's any action on it, his uh, whatever his tip up will flip up or whatever. So we've had a we had a, had one one for sure bite and a couple maybe bites, and then on the sonar we've seen a little bit of action, but it's not been consistent. A couple waves of fish coming in, but no real interest on any of the baits. Not haven't really had much much chases i mean a couple a couple of fish have come in and to check the baits out but it still nothing to show for it so we're coming into five o'clock here it's uh it's getting late so i'm really hoping we can just get one fish on top of the ice for for dinner and, and avoid eating that minnow minnow soup so we'll see
How many snowballs till I land one on the minnow bucket, you think? You'll hear it. You'll hear it. Just say 25. This is three. Oh, that was close. This is what it's come to. <laughs> Heading back now with a bit of fire starter. Got some birch bark to get the tent all heated. Still a blank though on the fish. We're getting some niblets here and there from, uh, looks like some smelt might have moved in. And they've just been picking off the minnows one by one. So I mean, even that would be better than minnow soup, I think. So anyways, it's getting dark here pretty soon and we're hoping that the burbot will help turn our night around here. Here is the first positive update of the day. <laughs> Chris caught his first burbot just now. It's not a lot, but I mean, it's something to eat anyways. So how does he feel, Chris? First burbot. <laughs> it's funny. So we, we'd been in the tent for a while, being lazy, shooting the shoot around. Yep. Came out, boom, that one was up. That one was up too, or that one over there. We had two uh, two flags basically. Yeah, I missed the first one. <laughs> first one we missed, which was uh, pretty devastating. It was, <laughs> was, honestly, I was worried. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just a bite. Who knows, right? Probably a burbot. And uh, anyways, came here and this guy was still on. And you could watch on Chris's video, uh, cranked it up, hand bombed it. A decent fight for a, yeah. for a burbot anyways. like. I'm used to catching little brookies, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I'm sure we're, we'll get that guy dispatched here and cooked up on the on the on the stove in the tent. We're not starving tonight, man. Nope, not yet. Thankfully, <laughs> no minnow soup. <laughs> no, I still feel like I should probably eat a minnow though. All right, he's eating a minnow. I'm gonna eat one. I'm gonna try it. I feel like it's too much build up. <laughs> You're not gonna try one? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how the night goes. <laughs> that was the main reason you went out. <laughs> that was the reason you went out. <laughs> Give her. <laughs> smells that's got a smell to it what do you think it smells like though I just smell fish it's, yeah at first i just got the fried butter smell yeah no it was fried butter first but now it's just like straight bourbon yeah <laughs> How are we looking? Huh, lying down. Are you serious? Yeah. We got lined down. <laughs> Which one? Uh, mine. I'm oh, beautiful. Mm. Well, I was not a false alarm, but uh, a little technical difficulties with the Chris's spool. I guess it locked up and fish wasn't able to run with the bait and ripped his minnow off. So Chris is out there setting his. Uh, are you setting a line out there? Huh? You setting your line? Yeah. He's gonna reset his middle for the night. We were just about ready <laughs> to pack it and he went, Chris went for a pee and he saw that his tip up had triggered down. So a little last minute excitement before we tuck, get tucked into bed here. You can see the setup. We got the nice cots. We're, we're really roughing it, really roughing it this time. So 
I think that's going to be it for uh, for today. So good night, and we will catch you guys in the morning, hopefully with some more burbot. I slept uh, like a stone, though. <laughs> but I could probably use for five more stones. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right, we're going to go check the lines, and the uh, fire's out. And we got a big puddle. We made ourselves a puddle lake. Check Whoa. this out. Got some good news. One, two, three. Three lines down. I got weight. Mine feels pretty fish? decent. Fish? Yeah. Okay, good. Fish number two. We're on. Burbet. That's a be that's a good one. Oh, oh I lost him at the hole. <laughs> I, <was> no. <laughs> I saw oh. that was painful. Oh. Did it break the line? Just it was hooked like on the outside of the mouth. Seriously. Oh, that hurts, man. Greasy burb in the morning. Look at that. Mine was bigger than that. Really? It was chunky. Oh, well, it's probably about the same. That's a good fish. There's a little bit of meat on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting cold out here now. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I lost all my heat from <laughs> losing <the> fish. <laughs> There's still hope, though. I know, I gotta go check the other still one. Still got hope. Hey, we got some breakfast. Breakfast burbot. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. It's the fish of the day. It's the fish of the weekend. Fish of the weekend. Fish of the 24 hours. I like the bourbon survival challenge, man. That's hilarious. Would you like to have a bourbon or a bourbon, sir? Would you like a bourbon cooked this way or that way? Get real like a, fancy. A, a wet bourbon or would you like a fried bourbon? <laughs> it's got a tint to it. Yeah, it's got a tint. I was like looking at it. I'm like, it looks a little bit yellowish. I've always been told not to, not to drink yellow? indulge in yellow <laughs> snow. and It's not snow, though. It's yellow water. <laughs> Marking anything on there? Man, like I, I was telling Chris at the beginning, it was just filled with smelt. Like you can, oh yeah, like tiny little yeah. lines that kind of are really skittish. They're going up and down, and they're actually you can tell they're afraid of the lure. Yeah, if you don't know what a smelt is, it's, it's basically a small minnow. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it, well maybe a bigger minnow, right? They, sure. Like yeah. uh, like t they get up like ten inches. We've seen them here. It's yeah. great pike bait and good eating too. Good actually. eating. They call them the uh, French fries of the lake. But they're harder to catch. Well, yeah. not like with what we're using. We're right. Going, we're targeting bigger fish. So the and we've seen evidence on uh, some of our smaller minnows. Their tails will be completely nipped off yeah. from the smelt. They'll come in there and they'll just yeah. bite their tails off. Yeah. Yesterday we had trouble trying to hook one up yep. because the you could see the right. line keep going yeah, down, well, but it was uh -huh. just bite the tail off because it's not big enough to like eat, eat the whole thing. Exactly. So we're not really targeting 10 inch fish. We're hoping for 10 pound <laughs> fish. 10 pound. We're looking for the home run. In a perfect world. But yeah, we could spend all day catching little, bunch of little. We could. Yeah, if we wanted to. Have a smelt buffet. Yeah, <laughs> so add some variety to our diet. <laughs> really, well, I don't know how much burp you can live off for, for how long, so. <laughs> so I had a smelt. Well, let's get a, let's get a white fish or a lake trout. I would love a white fish. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Dude, that's so much water. I know. I just keep going. <laughs> I got it sinking. Yeah. I don't know if it shows, but it's <laughs> sinking so far down. You got like an inch of reveal <laughs> before. Uh... <laughs> but it's interesting, right? Like all the water's kind of collected on this side of the of the shelter, and it stayed. You know, I, I expected a lot more slush. Yeah. It's, it's not that bad. We, we lucked out there. It's not that bad. And it's like right at the foot of my cot is where it starts to get a little soupy. <laughs> Make 
shovel has holes in it. <laughs> Wonder how long you'd be doing this for before you actually finish up the job. Yeah, it's going not too bad. Right out there. And now the uh a little expedition. Figured we had to try to change something up. Chris is gonna stay back at camp and monitor his lines. And uh, I got a, I had a spot up here, it's about 400 meters away that I wanted to just test out, see if there's any cutter whiteies active in the area. This is a beautiful day. Like this, is, we got the whole lake to ourselves. It's just, just amazing. I can't believe more people don't want to do this. Looks like some deer tracks. Coming off the island there. We actually had some tracks right outside of our camp, fresh tracks this morning that is. And uh Chris is telling me he woke up, he doesn't know when, it's in the middle of the night and he and he said he thought he heard someone walking. With a, with a toboggan or something, but he was hearing the deer. Made it about 400 meters. It wasn't too bad of a, of a hike in, but it's tough when it's so slushy. It makes it that much harder and get hot. So I don't know if you can see, but camp is. I don't even know if I can see. It's like right there, maybe. The tent's white, so it's tough. <laughs> it's pretty camouflaged right now, obviously. But Chris is holding down the fort at uh, at HQ, and yeah, hopefully this spot uh, brings us some luck. So basically, I'm, I'm focusing on a 30 foot hump that's somewhere right around here, and now beyond here is super deep water, like 150 plus feet. So. Basically, I'm looking for a feeding shelf. I'm hoping to find some active fish. Um, I don't want to make any promises, but we've had we've had luck here in the past. I've been saying that a lot recently, but you know that's ice fishing. That's fishing in general. That's why it's called fishing, not catching. So we're gonna get a couple holes popped here. I'm gonna set one minnow that way, and uh, I'll be I'll have an active jigging hole right here. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. I don't know why I do this to myself. We're gonna be using the vibrato. This one's the bigger size, the 14 gram. I think this is called the uh, natural shiner, just like a silver. It looks like a looks like your your typical minnow. And we are still on the flat. This hole we're at 25 feet. So turn this a little bit. Pretty much exactly where I was hoping to be. Come on. 
Come on. That mark came out of nowhere. I thought, oh, and it's gone, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> oh God, that is frustrating. Huge mark. Definitely a target species, but I was so zoned out that the mark popped out of nowhere. I just assumed it was my, my lure. Oh, it's frustrating. We're on plan. We're on plan Z here. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just drill a bunch of holes out. I wanna find wh where this flat starts to break off into deeper water and try fishing the break. So yeah, I don't know. We marked we marked the fish. Um, I gave it 15 minutes, which is I know it's not a lot of time, but um, I'm really looking to find active fish and find them quick. So basically, what we're doing now is hole hopping. So like I said, I'm gonna punch a bunch of holes straight out, measure them, look for when that. 25 30 feet when it starts to decline or gets deeper quickly and uh yeah i'm gonna try some deeper water here so see what happens so our uh our nice weather is slowly slipping away here i'm sure you can hear that wind it's ripping now make it a little bit chilly but not much to update we uh moved the minnow out found 45 feet of water maybe about 50 feet that way I'm still jigging here in 30, 35 feet. Um, and yeah, just waiting, man. Like, it's tough. It's, uh, this is what ice fishing really is. <laughs> it's not always glamorous, unfortunately, but we're just looking for one bite now. So if we can get that one bite, it can make this whole trip worth it. So cross your fingers, say a prayer, whatever you want to do. Just uh, keep us in your thoughts for... Uh, <laughs> Maybe we can maybe, maybe we can pull it off. Maybe we can get a nice fish topside here yet. Now to make the the painful walk back to camp and uh, explain to Chris about my uh, <laughs> my failures. But hey, we gave it a good shot. You know, we gave it a. At least we tried. At least we tried. It's like you shovel, you got like an hour till it fills back up. Need a, <laughs> need a baler. Oh man, you are the baler. Yeah. I'm thinking get it far enough away from the tent. I've resorted back to bed. I'm defeated from my uh, failed expedition from <laughs> this morning. <laughs> the wind just kicked the crap out of me man like we're, it was me and Chris just saying like, it was almost for five minutes anyways it was so nice when the sun came out and then obviously not far behind the wind just killed me the aftermath See, the footprint of the tent is absolutely massive. It looks like it's a small house or a small cabin. Then obviously what we've been showing you guys, the soup. And uh, yeah, everything's packed up. Just about ready to hit the road here. Just ratcheting down the final things. Had a bit of a mishap with the, <laughs> with the tent. And uh, the, as we're kind of setting it or taking it down, the wind picked it up and took it away like a kite. And there's... Chris, a couple hundred feet away, chasing it like a like a chicken with his head cut head cut off. But uh, we got it. It's uh, I've been there before myself, but uh, no harm done. I li might need a little uh, uh, what duct tape. A little duct tape when he gets home. But nonetheless, guys, I think that's it for now. Uh, big thanks to Chris for making a trip up and coming out with me and 
slaying burbot and sorry to Chris that I couldn't get him on some Lakers, but we tried not for lack of effort. Yeah, we tried, we had a good afternoon and you know, whatever. That's the way it goes. Sometimes. We got lots to eat anyway. Yeah, well the burbots were uh, cooperating luckily and uh, yeah, maybe next time, eh? Yeah. All right, well, thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll, we'll get you in the next one.